Before we begin, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, ZenThreadShop.com. This amazing website not only has great apparel, bath products, jewelry, and more, but they also donate a portion of their net proceeds to Beyond Giving, a 501c3 organization that currently provides funding to create and staff a nonprofit training center at which the underserved will acquire the entrepreneurial skills uh, they need to become self-sufficient. By entering the code ZTSROOM6 at checkout, you'll not only be helping the community, but saving 20% off your order too. It's a win-win all around. Thanks Zen Thread Shop for being a sponsor and thank you for watching. Now onto the show. Wait, is this still a timer? What's going on? It's oh, it's recording. Oh, I thought it was a photo. Hi, I'm Ricky Bobby. And if you don't chew Big Red, then f*** you. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's not going to be the outro. <laughs> If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I am very happy to welcome a local band that has not been local lately. You've been traveling all over the place, haven't you? Yeah, man. Yeah? Please welcome to the show, The Nocturnal Affair. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hello. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves, for those that don't know you. Oh, Anybody? Buddy Inger. Michael James. Drucifer. Brennan. Josh. <laughs> Donkey. Welcome to my home, guys. Cheers. Okay. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cilantro. Mm -hmm. Cilantro. So, right off the bat, um, according to your Facebook page, you're supposed to be in Brooklyn right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I sent off a hurried email to your man and said, hey, is this date still good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that, that, that's, uh, that show is uh, going on without you, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So, right off the bat, great interviews going great. Um, for those of you that may have been watching uh, Who Will Rock You, you might recognize the band. They were on there uh, with... Who else was on that series with you? Hounds. Yes, Hounds. Uh, Roxy Gun Project. One. Or Crimson, Crimson Riot. Crimson Riot. Crimson yeah. Riot. Yes, Crimson Riot has been on the show. Superman. Yes. And, Clark Kent. And, yeah. Second. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, I think Crimson Riot would be their Superman. Yeah. Yeah, sure. why not? Sure. I mean, um, but I, I, I'm going to play the fifth, right. so I don't put my foot in my fifth. mouth. Because I, I don't know which one they prefer, so I don't <laughs> Oh, they've said a uh, Roxy Gun is their day, their day job. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so thank you very much for making time in your busy schedule, though. Thank you very um, much. Do we have a um, what's coming up next in terms of shows or whatever? Let's get that out of the way. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and wait until we release our first single from the record we've been working on before we really book any shows. Smart. Um, I mean, the earliest probably summer, latest probably fall. In summer. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, I, I apologize. I just had one of those moments. I'm, don't get old. Hey, quick cut. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. Cut it stays in. It's too in. late. I just oh. had a baby. That's right. <laughs> we'll, every time, every time you do that, let's, uh, we'll take oh. a drink. Quick. Oh, shit. Everybody yell Here numbers. You're distracted. Yell numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Should well, I take my clothes off? Would that distract well, well, to be fair. <laughs> To be fair, I did see a picture with him holding a baby, but that was your baby? That was my baby. No, it was him holding a baby. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's we just saw kind of have beards, so... It's true. Yeah. He has way more hair than I do, though. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> true. Well, congrats. Thank you. First one? Uh, our second. I didn't learn your lesson, did you? No. I don't know. <laughs> What'd you name it? Presley, after Elvis. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, Before we get into, you know... Your music and all that jazz. Let's start 
Yes, I know it's not jazz. <laughs> we haven't had enough alcohol yet. Um, so, <laughs> how long have you all been in Vegas? Oof, you go first. Uh, six years. Mm, five years for me. Most of my life? Yeah. I'm going to say that most of my life. But not actually native? Not actually native. No. I don't know. First time in a while, not one person said, oh, I was born here. Which is nice. <laughs> this is a transient town. Yeah. Get, the native, much, so. get the natives yeah. out of here. Now, um, how long have you been the Nocturnal Affair? We've been the Nocturnal Affair since January of 2017. Right on. Mm -hmm. And it... It was whose brainchild was it? It was mine. It was yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't want to assume. Yeah. Just because you're the singer. <laughs> um, now, how long have the four of you been the Nocturnal Affair? Has any, is anybody new to the fold, so to speak? Um, newest. Newest. Oh, wait, yeah. Mike, we're, I think we were within a month of each other. Yeah. yeah pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Drew. Um, Drew's been with me since 2015. We were another band called The Feels. Yeah. And I think I saw something about you guys. Yeah. Right on. Absolutely ridiculous goth rock that... <laughs> As opposed to the, goth, yeah. the totally well, sober like, goth rock. I <laughs> totally named it after a meme, so it was just, it was, it was a lot of fun, and yeah. kind of realized we thought we had something, and a few people told us we had something, so we uh, decided to... Mm -hmm. Do something with it. Yeah, one yeah. of our number one fans. Yeah, Andy. He uh, he'd oh, yeah. show up to shows of the fields, <laughs> and him and his girlfriend would wrote made their own t-shirts. They made their own nice. merch of us. One of us show up. <laughs> one of our favorite stories before uh, I joined was Drew came up and was like, "Oh my god, where'd you get those shirt?" Like. I didn't know we still had those. <laughs> we were like, yeah, those. We never had them. We never had them. Nice. I just never tell him anything. So then he's like, oh, man, okay, cool. Let's and now look, right. living the dream. <laughs> I've, I've, I've worked Woo. my way up. Right on. Um, now, are you, I know you're, you're currently uh, drummerless, right? Yeah. Do you, are you auditioning anybody or do you have anybody in the wings wait, kind of feeling them out? Or is are out there. Uh, the thing about this band is it's always been me playing with my favorite musicians. Right. So it's, it's kind of been like a revolving door. Uh, <laughs> people come in, they play with me live, uh, and then if they aren't feeling it, they take right. a walk. The other people come in. But I mean, he's he's been with us twice. I mean, he was with us a few a couple years ago and then did his own thing and he's back again killing it. So. I, I laugh yeah. because faithful viewers will... will realized that I sang for seven years in a band called Revolving Door. It was the best name I ever came That's up with. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Seven <laughs> bass players. <laughs> we, we ended up with number two. Like, I, really? Yeah. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. S seven drummers. And, and, and went back to number two. Four keyboard Sounds players. Yeah. Four <laughs> keyboard players. We ended up with no keyboard player. Me and the lead guitarist were the only two original members. We started as a seven piece with a female singer, too. And Love we went to Whittle Two bass players four. at the same time? No. Have you ever done that? Two, Two drummers. No, three guitars. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was, one of my, one of my first bands, we were like, you know, nobody's ever done two bass players. For Let's a reason. do it. And then we're like, yeah, there's, there's a reason. reason why people don't use two bass players. The only oh, way that works no, is if one of you has a nine string bass. Yeah. <laughs> the it's... only way that works is if nobody listens to your band. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I was 15 and I'd been taking guitar for a year. And I was I'm like, gonna... this is great. And then everyone else was like, stop. I'm going to revolutionize the industry. Please don't. Um, it's that low voice, man. Like, right? you just, just more low end. More. Yeah. Two bass players were great um, if one amp is turned off. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I, met, when I met you guys, was that the Tyrants by Night show event? Were they? I mean, were they on the bill too? I love them. Yes, um, I'm trying to get them on. Man. We're working it's on funny schedules because you were asking if we have a drummer there. there I'm, I'm. Oh yeah, trying to push their drummer Josh. right now. Yeah, maybe we'll yeah. see. Talking to a few people. Josh, make it work. I love Josh. His schedule's so crazy as it is. It just we're having trouble getting him on here. But yeah, he. Uh, it, long story there, but um, it's funny how the, the the worlds intersect because I met Josh when he was bartending at Club One Seven Two. Yeah. Doing a live show review and a whiskey review because he had interhooked me on some uh, some whiskeys there. And he said, you should come see us at Vamped, where I met you guys. And I talked to you and you were just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I, I, I'm I saw pretty sure he was just overanalyzing everything I, he did on stage. Pretty much. It was after you I'm pretty sure show. he told me he was a Niners fan. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Well, you didn't tell me you were a Niners fan. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway. Um, <laughs> no, I'm all born wrong. Yeah. That was the show, I forget the name of the band, but the, the, it, their lead guitarist had a white flying V guitar and a white flying V violin. 
Voltaire? Yes. Yeah, yeah, what I don't, the? I don't think we what? Were, yeah. I don't think we were on that bill. I want it flying these <laughs> We were on that bill and you still know that. No, I, I remember the bill. Well, no, no, it wasn't yeah. Voltaire. It was, it was some other band. I can't remember. Um, anyway. What? All right. White flying V guitar. But I miss him. I did a, I did a review of that live show four times by night, I believe. Link here. I will clarify that. But that's where I met you guys. <laughs> was it when? Was it Devil's Run? Maybe we were there. With the violinist hanging out. Wow. No. But it was, at least oh, he, he so was playing, and show. suddenly he went like huh? this, grabbed his flying V. I'm like, what yeah. am I seeing right now? That the metal band yeah. was a violin. The only band I know that does that yeah. is Voltaire. So it it must be Voltaire. Yeah. It must have been them. <laughs> it was a great. It was. It was good. But you were on the bill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you were playing I'm telling you. Bravo Delta? I don't think so. Bravo Delta was... I... Wow. <sighs> well, it sucks being old. I can't remember stuff. Um, cheers! Yeah, right? Cheers! Cheers! Yeah. Right. cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh. Tonight's uh, shenanigans are brought to you mostly by Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Ooh. Yes. Very good. good stuff. Yeah. Um, how long, getting back to my job, <laughs> how long have you been uh, playing music individually? Uh, since I was 12. Mm. Since I was 13, I'm 34 since now. Was, so. wow. Since I was at 14, when I first started. Yeah. Uh, I was in choir as a child and I had been playing piano since I was about six. Nice. So, not professional piano, I'm not like a classical trained pianist. I was, pianist, I was but... in choir, altar boy, and I was playing piano at seven, so. Mm. Here you go. Yeah, I was I was more so just like playing video games, and then like liking what I was hearing. So I would like mm -hmm. borrow my family's like little Casio keyboard and like try to like copy what I was hearing. And See, I'm I'm old enough that it wasn't video games; it was a music box. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> so, moving on. Let's talk musical influences. Whoever wants to go first. Let's go this way. Okay. Oh man. This yeah. Quit passing the clock, Brandon. Keeping um, clockwise is just so unnatural. <laughs> your earliest musical influences. What was that early like? Uh, you was listening to video games, apparently. But uh, what was the music that you're saying? I want to do that. I, 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 and you know, you started tinkering around with music. Um. Well, I was when I was uh, when I was six, seven years old. I would make my mom sing the female parts to uh, the Grease songs. I, would, I, would, I wore out the VHS tape uh, in my TV. It actually stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would sing all the, the Danny Nico and the Kanicki parts. Um, so it was Grease. We sang a lot of uh, Queen, uh, David Bowie, and uh, she she had me on Bach. So... Yeah. 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 Queen to Bach makes sense, I guess. Yeah. And uh, actually, at a very young age, um, my sister was taking me to the local All Ages shows. And I'd be watching bands from out here called like, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Left Standing or mm -hmm. Frankie Perez and like uh -huh. stuff like that. So yeah. it was it was a lot of them that, that kind of made me like, oh, I want to do that. Mm. Nice. Good sister. Yeah. Yeah. Good mom too. Uh, that was early, early years. Yeah. Right on. Next! You know what I mean? I saying early on was like um, stuff like uh, kind of like speed metal or metal stuff like Slayer. Definitely my brothers and my cousins. They uh, were playing guitar. Maybe you want to play guitar. And uh, yeah, that was the stuff that I love. Brothers like kind of listen to like Judas Priest. Just kind of digging that kind of stuff at a young age. Cool. Yeah. This episode also brought to you by Ethan Williams and Spot to me. Um, <laughs> have you seen that meme where, with the uh, Slayer? It's like no matter, you, you know, even when you're the singer of Slayer, your teenage daughter will act like you're, you know, your embarrassment. <laughs> he's on, he's on the red carpet. He's like, yeah, and his teenage daughter's over there. just like. <laughs> Whatever. That's That's to be expected when you have kids. Yeah. They are considered like dad metal now, right? Ooh. Granddad metal. Oh my god. Ooh. I was yeah. years ago when when my daughter my daughter's twelve when my daughter was at that age where you're like you know she's still newborn and like hey onesies and stuff. I found myself in a hot topic for some reason I don't know why I forget what I was there for. Probably yeah. buttons. Anyway, um, they had onesies up. Said my mom listens to Guns N' Roses. My dad listens to Slayer. And I was like, that's how you're, you are no longer relevant as a metal band. <laughs> Take the, I, just kidding. Send all your hate mail to room6lv at gmail.com. Um, next, early music influences. What got you playing music? I think one of the first CDs I ever got was uh, Tonight's Stars Revolt by Power Man 5000. Mm. And 
Underrated band, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Right? right? And when I saw the, early, the yeah. earlier oh, music videos, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. Worlds Collide, and Nobody's Real, and stuff like that, I was just kind of captivated by the whole theatrics of everything. I'm like, wow, like, I want to do stuff like that. And that got me into Rob Zombie, which is also like, very theatrical. Same sort yeah. of band, yeah. Yeah. And crazy story about Pyramid of the Thousand, I had a, a tour poster from 2000. I actually missed the tour date in St. Petersburg when I lived in Florida, and I just recently saw them at Banff, and I finally got the meet Spider, and finally got the poster signed, so it was kind of like, was awesome. oh, like a childhood good night. dream <laughs> nice. fulfilled, so yeah. it's yeah. really cool. And I, just, I remember putting the CD, you know, in my little three-piece stereo <laughs> that every oh, yeah. kid at the day had, I'm picturing and it right just now. learned all the songs by ear and guitar, and, and taught myself how to play it before I, you know, started taking it seriously and got teachers and everything. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, of course, you guys heard about Neil Peart passing. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is sad. Did you, did you know he was taking lessons at like 40 or 50 years old? That's awesome. Yeah, like, that's the right. height of his, you know, he's, he's like, you know, I never really learned the fundamentals. He went from matchstick to tradition, tra- uh, matchstick to traditional after 30 years of playing. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine being that drum teacher? <laughs> like, wait, amazing. you want me um, to teach you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, Sorry. the guys that he was playing with when he when he uh, met met the guy that taught him how to do traditional were just like, I mean, like he was drooling over them. You know what I mean? Like, right? It's 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 still got to be just weird though. Like, you know, Eddie Eddie Van Halen's like, hey, teach me how to play, you know, Silent Night or I don't know, some silly, some simple guitar thing. You're just like, wait, wait, what? Um, how do you hold your guitar? Try yes. holding it like this. Wait, I don't use power tools. <laughs> that's awesome. You never stop learning. <laughs> Hey, no, cool. yeah, exactly. Um, and I, um, early on in, in the room six thing, I, I did a video called uh, "Should Should I Should You Take Lessons?" Because always I, uh, I I sing in a jazz band called the Journey Martinis. Ding! And uh, yeah, shameless plug. I am the least music theory like relevant guy there. They start talking about stuff, and I was like, "Where do I sing? Just tell me what. Where are we coming in? What metric? Where do we go? Yeah." And they're 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 talking. They they start talking stuff, and I'm like, okay, I need to I need to start boning up on my music theory and learning other stuff. Boning up, bone. And and now I take drum lessons with my drummer, who teaches drums. Uh, Sean awesome. Sean Flam. That's F L A M. You can check him out. I'll put a, a link somewhere. Um, he teach if you're local, you want to learn drums, guitar, piano. He's very patient. He teaches my 12 year old daughter when she can find the time, and and me. And uh, yeah, it's it's. You think you know an instrument until you actually have to learn to play it. It's so absolutely. Honestly, yeah. I was a big Metallica fan when I was a kid. You know, Ozzy, all the classics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I later in my teens got into a lot of classical stuff too. So yeah, all over. Right on. Um, yeah, teens was a completely different world for me as far as influences go. Like, yeah, yeah, get out. Was, <laughs> well, I forgot yeah. to include Danny Darrow. The the yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, loud, yeah. When I discovered who like Slipknot and like System of a Down were, I was like, people could do this with music, right? Uh, what? You don't have to say the age, but who's the oldest in the band? Who is the oldest? I don't know. Is it me, Drew? I think, I think it's yeah. I think hey, Mike, hey, are, are you older than forty-seven? No. Yes. Michael just turned sixty. Yeah, 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 still yeah, the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> just got my first grades. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually highlights. Trust it's me. Great. The it's, sad news is when you say, like, "Okay, it's time to trim it up." And you trim, and yeah. suddenly there's more hurry. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah! It was hiding, it was camouflaging. Oh. Um, from early musical influences, let's talk current musical influences. Uh, what's jazzing you up right now? What, what, mm. you know, what do you listen to when you, you really want to enjoy you know, music? Actually, uh, I'm a little ashamed to say this. No, no, no shame here. I never dove too deeply into Under Boingo. So lately I've been listening to their stuff uh, from like... Before they broke up the first time, and then, <laughs> then they got back together, and were like, "Well, I guess we'll just try this Dead Man's Party thing," and then that blew up, and they kind of kept going a little bit. So I've I've kind of been really loving that, and uh, understanding why a lot of bands don't do seven to ten minute songs anymore. Um, Speaking of Rush, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been uh, what else, what have I been listening to lately? What like Lindsay? What what have I been what have I been playing a lot of? Boingo, boingo. Boingo, boingo. What, 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 what else? What else? <laughs> There's an echo. We Breaking Benjamin. Breaking I, I love their new. Wow, a bit of a leap. That's a bit of a departure yeah, from Boingo, the boingo. System. I've been doing a lot of. I mean, I love Mike Patton. So you've been focusing on a lot of the vocal-driven. Songs. Yeah, I mean, I, I I always listen to. Uh, I 
uh, Stabbing Westward just yeah. did a release. It's fantastic. I do the same thing. Like I, I prefer music that is either vocally driven, like you can tell, okay, a singer wrote the song and then this they did not mine. This is not I just you like filled with the peanut butter setting. Oh, cheers. Aww. Nice. Wow. So anywho Everybody, cheers again. I guess I see it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 it's a celebration. <laughs> Pinky up because I got plastic. Shot of my face. Okay. So where was I? Oh yes, uh, I like to listen to a lot of uh, like songs that were written by singers, and then the band kind of figured out what they want to do. Okay. It seems like to me, Oingo Boingo seems like that's that. not why I've been listening to those lately. Oh really? Yeah. No, it's it's I've been listening to like Tool, uh, Perfect Circle, Nine Inch Nails, and and System because. Uh, I couldn't when we were writing the record because those songs, mm -hmm. if I, I listen to them nonstop because they're very catchy to me, they would, so then it comes out of my writing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have to like, I have to like, Oh no! so I didn't listen I to like that. System of a Down for the last two years. Yeah. You, 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 have, to, you have to like woodshed yeah. yourself and be like, mm -hmm. nope, I'll listen to our stuff right now. Yeah. 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 Like <laughs> Been there, done that too. I have like heavy breakdown and then they'll be like, why is this Armenian sounding classical guitar in here. You're not even Armenian. What are you doing? Like, Damn you, it's smoked out! Yeah, like, <laughs> I can't. I gotta... Yes. So, so lately I've been like, oh, yeah, I get to hear all the stuff. And Greg Benjamin just released, like, a new record. Yeah. It's awesome. I actually um, had that wonderful moment just a week ago. I got... To, we were playing... It was, uh... It wasn't Dead Man's Party. It was another Oingo Boingo, like, radio hit. I can't remember the top of my head. But I got to tell my, my daughter, hey! You know Danny Elfman? Yeah? That's him! <laughs> this is what he did before he went all movie crazy. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh! Uh, his, I just, I love that he, his voice is so, it changes so much. Like, like you, you hear when you oh, yeah. go. Like if you put Dead Man's like, Party next to Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah, like, that's the same guy? Like, oh my god. Yeah. It's completely, and he can morph his voice to speak, and then also, well actually, I don't think he was the speaking actor, he was just the singing. Part of Jack Skellington. I think it was somebody else who spoke. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know who the speaking part was. Yeah. But anyway. Yes. Uh, who's next? Current music. Music. Got you moving. Let's see. Twelve Foot Ninja. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. It's always in the mix, man. Mm -hmm. it's always I love doing the show because I hear bands mm -hmm. and artists I've never heard of before. Oh, Melbourne, no Australia, man. They're, uh, Australia's got some good stuff. Oh yeah. I want to go out to Australia right now. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Life sucks for you, and we're sorry. But at least you're getting rain now. Yeah. That, 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 uh... Mandy's so sick of cheersing right now. He's like, God, could we just drink this alcohol? <laughs> Whose shot is this, by the way? <laughs> that's yours. What? No, there's no alcohol in there. There's something in there. Oh, that's oh, yours. That's I think I took a sippy sip. There you go. No, I, did, I gotta work on that one. You asked for a shot glass. <laughs> Here we go. What is it? You're drinking it. It's that peanut, peanut butter. butter. Here it is. Oh, here's you. Here's you. Better here's than that. All right. That. Well then, I don't want to be rude in my own house. <laughs> here's to you and here's to me. If ever we should disagree, thanks for the interview. We're getting worse. Yes. Great. Here's to you and here's to me. And if ever we should disagree, then hell with you. And here's to me. Oh, there you go. Mm. If it wasn't my shot glass, I'd throw it in the air. I'm just kidding. So, um, twelve foot ninja. That's last yeah. One. And twelve foot ninja ginger. Gingerfish. Yeah. Ginger? Um, Should have gone first. He's taking all mine. Uh, <laughs> um, He's also describing you as a person. But also, it's a very mixed bag, man. Uh, <laughs> I, things even like to like, uh, like EDM, like even like uh, drum and bass or something real dark and heavy. Um, yeah, it's mixed. I don't know. Radio stuff. Yeah. You know what? I realized you guys introduced yourselves, but you didn't say what you play. So if you don't mind doing that, for, if somebody's watching this, they don't know who you are for whatever sure. reason, by all means. Who are you? What you do? I'm Brendan. I drive the Zamboni. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understood that reference. <laughs> um, I sing live, and I play some piano sometimes. Piano. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. Andy, play guitar. Mm -hmm. Lead guitar? Uh, we don't think of it like, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. ask a guitarist that. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I, I saw the battle in your head. You're like, we don't think. Yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do all the leads. Everybody else is just uh, noodling. <laughs> uh, I'm Michael. I play bass and dabble in a little bit of backup vocals. Mm. To babbling, to babbling, mm -hmm. but but dabbles. Drusifer, guitar.
I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and lead our guitar. Yeah. Yes. Lead this guitar. Lead I'm Josh. Guitar. I'm the host. Thanks for watching. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, first guitar. Yeah, first guitar. The first chair. Lead a guitar, soprano. Um, <laughs> guitar A, guitar one. So if you're a drummer and you like the band and you think you might want to be a drummer, hit him up. <laughs> I'm very strict. You'll probably hate me. Are you Are you a rehearsal Nazi? Uh, I am not the rehearsal Nazi. When, when revolving First of doors. all, I'm, I'm Jewish, so it would be... Ooh, I'm sorry. Yes. So I assigned the Nazi part to somebody else. You're wearing the wrong star. What? This is the right star. <laughs> this is... This I, is I'm Joshy. This is all about the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get one of those a day, by the way. I wasted it on that. It's okay. <laughs> Can't use it anymore. But, now. uh... Um, <laughs> I um Christ. The interview's going great. So <laughs> um Don't bring up Hitler. Don't bring up Hitler. <laughs> Shit! When, <Damn> it! <laughs> when I <laughs> when I uh when the revolving door was a seven piece, I I ended up being the I'm the youngest guy in the band and I'm like, guys, we have a gig. We got a gig coming up, come on. And they're like, Hey man, you like this song? You, yeah, you remember this song? And like, come on. Three guitarists in one band. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, you're just like, come on. We have three hours to fill. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, shows. Okay, they're not three hours. Yeah, yet? I would never subject yet? somebody to three hours of music. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh, no, two two forty five. <laughs> Just fine. Two forty five. With like a solid like like Honestly, ten, ten to minute, fifteen minute, intermission, intermission of Liza Minnelli. Doing her greatest hits. Wouldn't that be amazing? Like, especially at like metal show, but wouldn't that be well, amazing? See, Suddenly, so with an ass on this, there's a big screen. The band leaves. There's a big screen. There's Liza Minnelli. And you're like, what the fuck? It's actually an extreme <laughs> mashup of Barbara Streisand's "Papa, Can You Hear Me?" Oh and, God. Uh, Frozen's "Do You Want to Build a Snowman?" And that would be the best part of the they're night. The same song. In summer. Anyway, <laughs> I have a 12 year old. I, I know the Frozen soundtrack. <laughs> you know, how old's your oldest? Uh, 12. Okay. Boy or girl? Boy. You have my sympathies. <laughs> you know he's talking about his bass guitars, right? That's what he's talking about. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I can do the Frozen soundtrack anyway. Voice. I can't make it. Voice. Dad, stop calling them your children. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got beautiful kids. Oh, oh, thanks, oh yes. God. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the, uh, what's the old name? Caleb. Caleb. So it's Caleb and I'm sorry. What was it? The Presley. Presley. Mm -hmm. Caleb and Presley. Who's mm -hmm. Caleb named after? Uh, if you don't mind me asking. Boy, whoever is the most famous Caleb. <laughs> Some guy named Caleb. You like Some guy. There are no famous. Mom likes the name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might. You all. From now on, just you gotta that. say it's your middle name every <laughs> yeah. time. There we go. Or else I'm gonna say it. <laughs> we don't talk about Caleb. <laughs> Ever since the incident. The incident. <laughs> the incident. <laughs> With the Academy. Um, let's talk shows. Um, favorite show memory as a band? It could be good, it could be bad, could somebody could have lost their underwear, whatever. You go first, Michael. Uh, I think one of my favorite shows on the tour was uh, the Thompson House in Newport, Kentucky, because it was yes. a yeah. haunted mansion. And we, played, and we played yeah. in the basement of it. After well, after we played, the guy was kind enough to give us a tour through like all these shut down oh, rooms, full yeah. of haunted pianos and well, cobwebs. And do you know the history? Do you, cool you guys remember the history? Do you remember the? Go for it. Yeah, yeah. I Thompson know House a bunch was of stuff. was the house that the, it was the creator of the Tommy Gun, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, but it was also used to to imprison uh, which which so side of the war was it? Yankees, Yankees. 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 Union soldiers. Union soldiers. Union soldiers? Union yeah, I think Kentucky. So in the basement. Stone walls with with uh, with bars on them from mm -hmm. when it was, and they were just like jail. Up. There's freaking webs everywhere. It was terrible. Spiders. I hated it. But it, everything else was great. Um, they the I just hated the spiders. The house itself was beautiful. Uh, um, the the attic itself had a secret hallway that I guess people used to hide in. As you do. And on top of that, they said the the, the ghost of the house resided there. Um, and they they believe in that so much that when you go up the stairs to go to the attic. There is a bucket filled with salt, and they have to constantly wow. replace the salt line that they have. You remember? Yeah. And when we went salt up there, it was like moved, goes away, yeah. and the guy the guy had to unbreak it. We went up there, we came back down, and he had to do it again because it had been it had been. I legit with. felt cold breezes in that upper floor area, and I was like, 
That's kind of weird. Uh, that's not good. It was, I, was, I was too intoxicated to kind of feel any, <laughs> be sensitive to any yeah, presence. Just like, like, yeah, like, I was I was pretty just stoked to be there. It was yeah. it was great. Thanks for watching Ghost Hunters. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Ghost Adventures. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna be like I saw a ghost or anything, but it was awesome. Yeah, we actually filmed oh, yeah. like a little. I was gonna say it sounds adventures. like a great place for a music video. Yes. Well, we actually filmed like a little, uh, like an amateur little documentary. And put it up on our page. Right. And Facebook everything went yeah. wrong with Soundcheck. I, I think things didn't go wrong with us with Soundcheck because we didn't really get much of one. But, but that, when, when everybody else was, was doing sound checks, yeah. nothing was working for no reason. Yeah. Like things would go wrong and, and the sound guy would be like, yeah, this always happens. This is a. Wow. Yeah. So it's yeah, like a sound guy's nightmare. Yeah. yeah, my DI was, you know, I was like, just like, I just, nothing come out of my amp and then I go yeah. to unplug it and I get like five guys. a huge, like, like jolt, like uh, through my whole body, and plug it back in, and everything. Went. I think I remember you saying that you got you were like immediately angry. You were I like, was like, I got electrocuted, <laughs> shocked. <laughs> Great, use it. So, but, two, but, three, I was, but I was also <laughs> like, it's been raining all day, and you're like plugging in instruments, so I didn't. Well, yeah, anything. you know, it's it's not the the newest building, so there's like puddles with like uh, some cables laying in. It. I'm like. That's that, called ambiance. It made it better. Yeah, it was great. You, <laughs> you went into one of the sections of the house where they hold other shows. It was like, it was a max, like, number of people, specifically in that area, where the floor would, like, cave in. Like, it was, like, beautiful murals all over the walls. It was great. It was great. Awesome. A dude it's, fell up the stairs, blood everywhere. You guys well, remember? Who hasn't fallen up the stairs? There's a guy out front. Do you remember that? It was, it was, yeah, your family yeah. helped him. Yeah. Your family, like, the guy just, like, right. st- like bleeding everywhere. Yeah. Anyway. Totally not related to that. Uh, my mom actually had to get a EMT uh, help at my uh, college graduation. Uh, you ever been to the arena at or- Orleans? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Really tiny, narrow steps. Oh, yeah. She's now 85. She was like 83 at the 82 at the time. And she took a header. Oh, oh no. And I'm a, I, I actually got to be on stage. Uh, not to make this about me, but I got to be on stage because I, they said, Hey, what graduating student wants to sing this national anthem? Send us a video. I won. Oh, and you were I, like, oh, I got to sing at the arena in New Orleans. Oh, Great no sound insane. system, by the way. No Hell pressure. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, and, and oh yeah, I'm singing. So I'm up there. The mayor is up there. She's an awesome lady, by the way. Gangster. Oh, have you met her? Uh, she was at the grand opening for my buddy's uh, brewery. So you know, her husband, Oscar, was mayor first. He right. had the, his business card was a poker chip. We went to the same synagogue. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had his business card was a poker chip, and I think it was like five thousand dollar one, something like that, or hundred dollar, whatever it was. She said. When she found out that she might actually be mayor, she's like, all right, I'll be mayor, but I want my poker to be double. <laughs> she's like, I want like the $10,000. Like, nice. Uh, but uh, she was up there, and, and, I, and I go, I, it comes my turn to sing the national anthem. And I'm, yeah. I'm fine. It's the national anthem. I'm good. And all these servicemen stand up right in front of me. If anybody's gonna care if I mess it up, you know, and and of course, everybody else is just American, but these guys are super American, like ultra mega American yeah. premium. That's better. I thought he meant. Ugh, nobody said troops would be there. I hate those guys. <laughs> oh my god. Well, but the important thing is, the important thing is, I was <laughs> <there. laughs> hell yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, Mayor actually said it was the best version she'd ever heard. Nice. It's awesome. Just saying, you know. Anyway, Songbird of our generation. Getting back to my job, sorry. <laughs> um, so your favorite, is that all your favorite show memory pretty much is the Haunted Mansion thing? Well, that was his. Ha- not Haunted oh, Mansion. Yeah, that was his. I got one. I would love to play the Haunted Mansion. Right. Let's oh, go. God, yes. Disneyland. How come you never see that live? I'm there. Well, Book us. <laughs> sorry to cut you off. Um, have you ever been at Disneyland and seen the, um, they have the Haunted Mansion singers? And they're all like ghosted up. During, During the whole Halloween season, yeah. They, and they're they singing. Put the, the ghouls yeah, on and, the... They put them on a, a floating raft. No, these guys were just walking around, of, and they would just suddenly there'd be a guy, and, and I was standing next to the guy oh, on no. an iPad, and they would just boom, be playing at Downtown Disney, and um, they were, they were doing like four or five part harmonies. It's the it's usually the barbershop quartet that hangs outside of the ice cream parlor. Oh yeah, I totally recognize that. They, uh, and a little bit of Disney unfortunately, nerd, but. unfortunately, two of them were flat. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> oh, mine was uh, definitely fire. when we were on tour and we uh, we rolled through hometown Vegas. Mm. And, yeah, uh, it's a fine. Is it rolling that through when you're coming back home? We did a little bit of both. Okay, just check. Well, it was yeah. a little bit of column exactly A, a little bit of column through. B. <laughs> yeah, exactly midway through. The tour riding was crazy. Yeah, but yeah, been the overwhelming response of how might as well just do this. Perfect. <laughs> All the support and stuff like that was uh, yeah, that was really rad. That was a really good. Really good feeling. 
up there and playing and like when it ended and everything. I mean, plus I got some panties to wear. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was fucking awesome. That, that's yeah, only it, it was all of our parents. Like we didn't oh, understand. <laughs> okay, wait, like, wait, back up. Very, <laughs> then you can imagine we then Grandma. had to tour the rest of the fucking tour. Oh, we're not them. even clean, like, dude. And just can you throw them away? <laughs> hung them up on the fucking van. Nice. Um, that's on the Rockstar Sorry, checklist, though. Like, <laughs> that's what I was playing with it. Well, really? I remember, yeah, you got panties, like great panties. I've had a though, pick. Actual, like, I, I, I've no, had no, someone no. ask for my pick. I've never had panties thrown at me. Oh, Which is good because my wife is in the audience. Nice. That show was also fun, too, because it was a, a, an amazing social experiment for Vance because most of the shows there, they start around like 8 or 9. Yeah. That show started at 7. So by 10 o'clock, <laughs> by the time 6 9 goes off, everybody at the bar is like this. Everything's wasted. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> so everybody. true. Sometimes those are the best. You ever... Mm. I was cheersing him because, you know, he... Uh-huh. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Cheers. I guess I'll cheers you guys too. Hey. Hey, I take you into my home on this, Love the, it. on this, the afternoon of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> you come to me. Um, so, um... Have you ever been so drunk, like maybe, oh maybe maybe somebody bought the band shots or something, and you realize that you start a new set and three songs in, you realize I don't remember doing those songs. Don't make me lie to you. Uh, yeah. Don't make me lie to you. <laughs> like, like Snow White says, sitting on Pinocchio's face, lie to me, you bastard, lie to me. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've, I've I've definitely. Uh... We've, we, there's been times where we've played songs, uh, maybe not necessarily with this band, where I've been with other musical projects, and I, I can tell what part of the night it is by which song's happening. And like, you finish a song, and then a specific song starts, you're like, oh my, yeah, I don't remember playing the other ones that led up to this. Yeah. Cool! I Let's go! I literally had that thought of, I hope I do okay. Yeah. And then I was like, we've been playing for seven years, yeah, we, I did okay. <laughs> no, it's highway hypnosis. Uh, it was like, <laughs> this was the, this was Revolving Door, with like, it was like brown eyed girl and fucking, you know, it, it was covers, 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 covers. Yeah. So I was like, I'm sure I did fine. They're dancing and having a good time and then buying the shots. I'm sure I did fine. But it was not, it, that was one of those times where I'm like, okay, from now on, I, I nurse drinks at gigs. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I wasn't prepared for on tour because I'm not a, a big drinker. But after every show, everybody wants to buy you a drink. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me buy you a beer. Well, when are they going to see you again? again? You know? So I'm in Brooklyn and. Thank God it was after the show because <laughs> for your year, I'm just sitting there like shit. Yeah. What do I do? Brooklyn was great, man. That was uh, that was, cool. that was fa- uh, Colorado. That was because you know yeah. up, up until about Florida, I kind of decided <clears throat> like uh, maybe not 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 to drink before a show, but uh, but in, in Colorado, that was before I figured that out. And, uh, <laughs> and bring the what I didn't know the about Denver is when you're that high up. The crash. One to two drinks turns into oh, oh three yeah. or four, and we hadn't eaten all day. And I oh, run into a very old choir friend of mine, and she's like, "Dude, uh, let me let me buy you some some whiskeys. It's it's uh, it's super cheap here, and it's on me tonight." And you know, I was already like pretty tense, and I was like, "Yeah, no, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a great idea." So I like take a shot, <laughs> and Nothing then can someone else was wrong. like, <laughs> "Someone else was like, oh yeah, let me buy a drink." I was like, "You can buy me a drink," and they got me another shot. I'm like, "Great." Two shots, that's all I need. And I'm like walking, and I'm like walking towards the stage for a sound, and then I realize I'm like. Did the stage have yeah. stairs? And I was like, I get roofied. Like, I start, I start panicking. I'm like, you know, when you're, you're like, mm-hmm. anxiety, so you're like, did I just get roofied by some stranger? Like, I gotta sing tonight. And my friend texts me, like, hey, are you okay? Like, you gotta be careful drinking out here if you're not used to the elevation. I was like, oh, word. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I've never <laughs> felt that good on two shots in my life. I, I didn't know that. I didn't think about that with altitude, but you were totally right. Yeah. Um, that's why down on the beach you can drink a lot more. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, anybody else's favorite show memory? Uh, you go first. I, I think Thompson House covered it. Thompson House was good. good. It sounds like well, one of those, yeah, yeah. even if it wasn't LA. necessarily good. LA was right. wild. I yeah. loved LA. I forgot that one. Yeah. Was LA was hey, broad. Randy Newman. We were, yeah. Huh? Hey, okay, Randy Newman. No, well, okay. It was either LA or also um, uh, Rhode Island. It was great, too. I know nothing about Rhode Island. My, but my yeah, family, yeah, yeah, like, like my yeah, back East yeah, family, yeah. like it was... Yeah. It was great. No, I mean, Rhode Island was New great. York was great, too. I had pizza five separate times. What, that what, was, day. what was the show? Uh, where was it at? Where, was it Kentucky? No, it wasn't Kentucky. Where, was it? where I stood on a... Yeah, you were in a bar. That was... Do tell. Was Tennessee. That was it was Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, Memphis. Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do tell. Yeah, 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 so the stage was so small, and it just... it The setup took so long for the headliner and the, the co-headliners 
that like it they they didn't want to strike in between bands. It would it would be more fruitful for everyone if sure. we just kind of just played strike play strike then whatever. So there was no room on the stage <laughs> anymore. For well, you the mean rest you of had us. like every band had their gear already on stage. Uh, it was enough. For, this this was probably the the width. Oh jeez. Or the like the what what they had they were able to stand in a line and I have two keyboards and uh like a huge stand for that and then I I like to also stand away from that. Sounds like and some people impossible. were standing on the floor. Oh, actually the bar was right next to the stage uh, and it was about this width. Yeah. Uh so I I set the keyboards up on the bar and I got on the bar and I did the whole show on the bar. As you so, do. Yeah, Memphis was a lot Adapt of fun. and overcome. <laughs> yeah, they know how to party, though. They were, I, I, we didn't have any room on the floor anyway, because the place Speaking was, of was packed. Yeah, right. On what, like a Tuesday? That place is full. It's Saturday. Was yeah, it a Saturday? Exactly. How do you remember <laughs> these things? Dude, how do you do <laughs> that? Dude, I'm, blown. I'm blown away, man. The wind, the wind was blowing from the east. Yeah. There was, girl, was it? there was a girl in the front with a butterfly kiss oh. her hair. It literally becomes a blow. All I remember is it was... It was yeah. Passover. It's like the first night of Passover, <laughs> and I brought matzah with me. And so I found out that night that the one of the other singers from the band that was touring with us oh, was nice. Jewish. So we totally had matzah before oh, yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Was super yeah. wholesome. Yeah, it was, it was. It was really good. Oh, way to way to way to class up the joint there. All right, moving on from favorite show memory. Let's talk. Um, which favorite venue? Is it the haunted house? Is it? If favorite it, venue we played? It doesn't have to be one you played. It doesn't even have to be like in local. What's your favorite venue? Mm-hmm. Well, let's be smart and suck up to Vegas. Vant and uh, Brooklyn Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I Which both of those I have never been to Brooklyn Bowl. I hear really good things about it. Oh, every, every time I want to, every time I think, hey, I'm gonna go to Brooklyn Bowl. I check it out as a private event. Yeah. yeah, I love Vant. Vant is just it's family. Well, you, you just you're like, oh, I'm playing Vant tonight. Cool. It's like it's it's that playing Vant is the equivalent of like. You know, like you get off of work after a long day, yeah. and like you're just looking forward to like go home, get your slippers and your you know PJs, what? like get on the couch, yeah. and like I mean, just order pizza. And just, like that's like that's like yeah. I'm gonna go play the match. Uh, it I, is. I love it. Easily it's, it's Vegas's best yeah. Yeah. rock bar. Yeah. I, 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 I will. Yes. I, again, I don't have any other. I don't have uh, Brooklyn Bowl to compare to it. I don't know how that compares as far as I've never played. I've never played I've never played Brooklyn Bowl. Is it Apple's Orange? Yeah, I, hear, I, I hear really good things about Lawrence. Yeah, the way they take care yeah, of yeah. musicians. Oh, yeah. They absolutely Best fried chicken, apparently. But the joint. Yeah, all their friends. Yeah. Yeah. The joint. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. want to be able to be playing huh? and look out Apparently. and see a bowling alley. <laughs> <This year? laughs> I don't know why. Virgin? On the other side of the crowd. Well, the coolest thing about it is over the bowling alley, they'll project what's going on on stage so you like you can bowl and still see it. Which, that is cool. Yeah, I got to watch Danzig and bowl. Like, that was something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winning. And then the, the <laughs> next night it was like Crowbar and Havoc and Bull. How and then the guys from Danzig were there. Yeah. Yeah. Bull was yeah. as well. Right. Oh my yeah. god, are you yeah. kidding me? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I was yeah. awesome. yeah. 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 how, uh, how much are tickets there usually? It does it depend on the show? It depends on the show. What was Danzig, yeah. like, you remember? It depends on the package. Um, it wasn't that much. Dude. He said package. Yeah. I'm, I'm ten. It's it's funny. Funny. You mentioned that, that Havoc show. Yeah. I've been trying to remember the other band that played yeah. Overkill that night. Uh, I think I, I went with a buddy, so I, I, I didn't get a chance. But um, hey, <laughs> thanks, buddies. Yes. Incidentally, if you're a band that's been on Room Six and you happen to be playing Brooklyn Bowl and maybe want to slip me a press pass or something so I can do a live show review, that'd be awesome. <sighs> Just saying. There you go. Right on. <laughs> <sighs> so we're saying Vamped or Brooklyn Bowl, basically. I'm a sucker for Live Nation too, though. I love House of Blues. Everyone oh, calls it. Yeah, everyone yeah, calls it House of Rules, but I love House no, of Blues yeah. exactly you know for that. They get in, they get that shit done. Exactly, yeah. they get you out of there. I, I love it. I was forced out to play uh, House of Blues once, and I, I mean, I, I've played the upstairs just doing like me and the acoustic. But downstairs, yeah, yeah. I mean, two sound people. I awesome. never, I'd never had that. Well, you get a monitor going in front of house. Guy, I know, right? but I was like, I was on, you know, backstage. We we opened, so I was, I was backstage. So like, oh, there's a sound guy. And I come out, and I look out, I was like, you're not going oh, to talking. <laughs> son of a bitch. And I have never had so much, I, my only regret, my only regret is that I, we were a three-piece, and I was all guitar, I was the front man. So I was guitar and singing, and I had to go back. I was soloing, and having a good time, and I was like, oh, I gotta go back. Of course. <laughs> and my only regret is that I couldn't stay on, late, on stage longer than our, our set, because it was just yeah. such a beautiful experience. Yeah. And the green rooms. Have, have you yeah. been to the green rooms in House yeah. of Blues? I took a shower on one. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> we all did at the same I was like, time. Was a sh- <laughs> they all have showers and then a huge hood in the ceiling because they know what's up. One of the bands yeah. on, on the bill actually went in. 
It was like, hey man, we're going to, you know, you want any? We're going to go, you know, smoke some pot. They said something else. And I was like, no, my wife's out there. She's allergic to pot smoke, uh, which is why we can't have any pot anywhere around the house. And, oh yeah, don't smoke pot, guys. Yeah. Seriously, because it's. I mean, right now. When, yeah, when, when right we're on a. Okay, later. When <laughs> we're, like, if, if she and I are out, if she and I are on a date or something and we walk by somebody who just ex- exhales, her throat starts closing and so like, I gotta go home. Jeez. Um, yeah, so she can't come to shows. But she came to House of Blues because, you know, her husband's playing House of Blues. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was exciting. She came, she brought friends. And I, I was like, oh, wow, you came. Oh, it's awesome. And then they went and I was like, and she was out in the crowd and smelled, smelled them in the greener. But 10 minutes later, they came wow. out. Didn't smell a thing. Can she drink uh, beer? She doesn't like to. Okay. She doesn't get a reaction from. Why would she get a reaction? From? Uh, I think it's it's either barley or hops. That's why there's some skunky beers like Stella. Uh, when you sip it, you're like, this tastes like <laughs> okay, some, right like skunky. <laughs> it tastes like skunky wheat. Toys. Tur- it's the terpenes. It's also the same plant family too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, terpenes. My man, this dude knows so much that's about the, terpenes. That's the flavor and smoke. Welcome to this old booze Yeah, hand. yeah, this guy. <laughs> this old booze hand. <laughs> Tonight we're <laughs> we're introducing the um, tea. All about the terps. <laughs> Them terps. That term hurt. Um, it's I like, like hot, but yeah. worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I like when I'm rainy. I'm not. Yeah, saying one's bad. Oh, we're totally holding this against you. Cool. I'm totally telling on you. Nice. Stand up your right. Raider shirt. I'm the Raiders. The first time I played right. House of Blues, it was surreal. <laughs> Five was least like, favorite venues. Go. I mean, <laughs> uh, like McDonald's, I grew up in Florida, Denny's, yeah. uh, in Orlando. Uh, you have a I played them all. Can we punk rock or Kenny's? Yeah, 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 yeah. I played the Kenny's. So, seeing like House Cooper. Can we punk rock or Kenny's? I mean, I'm like, I would love to play Kenny's. Yeah, I'm on the stage. We're coming to you. Like, literally the week before I played on there. We don't give you the grand slam. The grand slam. You're, you're 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 like, like, what? Oh, yeah, it's a show. Like, it's like it's like it's like it's it's tour. Yeah. <laughs> Waffle House, well, like I hops, and Dennis. The first 10 years of my music career playing dumb bars in Florida and never getting paid for a single show. I mean, if we're going to do it, Egg Works. And I move out here and I'm like, okay. What is going on here? the truck stop. What is it? Let's bring it in, guys. Let's bring it in. Apparently, that's how this is. We're going to look crazy here. The main reason I started Room 6 was I was like, okay. I want to, I want to get back into music, but I, what I really, really enjoy doing is the jazz. I'm going to do a jazz thing. So I'm doing the jazz thing. But I also want the local musician, local music, let's be honest, local musicians are terrible at promoting themselves usually. It's a llama. Mm-hmm. You know, a, yes it is. It's a 3D printed llama. I was Very, wow. Yeah. Sorry, okay. just a minute. You are the most observant person I've ever met. That is a 3D printed llama from yeah. my coworker who has a 3D printer. Gave himself one last Christmas. My daughter loves llamas. Time. Yeah, give it. His name. <laughs> Feel it, the texture, it's wonderful. His short name is Shadow. Shadow. There's a Bad five ass. name. His short name is Shadow? Shadow. Does he have trip pants? No. Did he name himself Shadow? No, my daughter did. That's pretty heavy. Okay, that's cool. cool. All right. But yes. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. He, he's, this is the he official knows. mascot of room six. She flies. Or he flies. This is Shadow. I put him there to greet guests because they come in. Can you sell it to here? All right, so getting back to what we were One talking about. <laughs> well, these guys are chit chatting. Is this, <laughs> is this allowed? This is. Uh, nicotine. Yeah, it's fine. Or would you prefer it to be done outside? It's fine. Yeah? She's not here. Well, it's not. It's not weed. It's nicotine. That's fine. It's, oh, there you go. It's fine. Oh, is, is it, it some beers? I mean, is it uh, vaporless? It's paper. Well, I mean, I don't see anything. It's, uh, it's water vapor. Some will come out a little bit, but not much. It's fine. It's, it's yeah. all about them clouds. It's all good. You might smell it. Has like a fruit roll kind of... It's all about that. Suddenly, I'm yeah. sucking on a hookah. It's all about the mix. <laughs> Strawberry? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> Oh God, Blue rat. Do I detect, All right. detect a hint of burnt <laughs> rubber? All right. Anyway, <laughs> we had a whole other conversation <laughs> while you guys were talking. <laughs> so we did favorite venue. Getting back to my job. Uh, is there a dream show you want to be on or, or be part of? Yes. A dream show? You, you want to play with Yes? No. Well, <laughs> I mean, fuck yeah, I would play with Yes. Uh, I don't know how their audience would feel about us, but I would play just to play with Yes. I've um, played weirder shows. So I'm you. sorry, you were asking him, and I interrupted No, 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 no. Okay. We had a whole other conversation uh, about House of Blues. I and... want to be on um, Hot Ones. First we feast. Yes! 110%. Mm. Although... That is goals, man. I don't think he's ever had a metal band on there. Uh, he's at well, Tenacious D. To, he's oh, at yeah. Tenacious D, oh, and they're the okay. metals that you can fucking be. Yeah. I love Tenacious D. <laughs> but, like, I would love to be on Hot Ones. I ditto, but why would he? I mean, there's no reason why. But, yeah, I would love to. Um, I will be quite honest. I steal quite a lot of your your methodology when I do my own interviews and shows. 
Um, I don't get, I, I don't have the crew that gets to like deep dive really deep, unfortunately. But um, so I can't say like, oh yeah, when you were in the elementary school at such and such school. All he does is Wikipedia and Instagram photos. <sighs> he, does he looks up Wikipedia. I mean, we don't have a Wikipedia page, so your half of your work Trust is done. Me, and then I know. just go on our Instagram, and if you go like super, super, super early into our Instagram days, oh. you'll see like. Photos of the fields. I, like, I honestly didn't first have demo a, cover. And... I didn't have a lot of time, unfortunately. That's okay. Brendan, the white half shirt and the mullet. What, what was that? <laughs> what was seventh grade like? Yeah. I <laughs> thought it looked great. The ladies <laughs> loved it. I didn't know I was a big I just joke. saw some oh, pictures yeah. recently. Actually, I, I meant to ask you, when did you decide to shave the side of your head? Just one side or both sides? Because, I mean, there's a different story, story for each one. I, I, oh, okay. Well, love yeah. to talk. But uh, I wanted something different, and then I realized that the other side needed to be the same. Yes. That's a lie. Um, when did I <laughs> shave my head? Trent Reznor is my Patronus. I've had... <laughs> <laughs> Trent Reznor. <laughs> um, tequila is my Patron. So Shit. I um, I started Wait. doing the Mohawk thing when I was like 15 or 16. Okay. And then uh, I tried every other hairstyle. I mean, grew it out a little bit. But my genetics... Have preferred the Mohawk. Whereas, and you know what? I'm going to listen to them. I don't know. Well, it, I don't. I don't consider that a Mohawk, though. It's not standing up. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be standing up to be a Mohawk. It's oh, it's no. flaccid. It's a yeah. wow. <laughs> it's just. It's not. Hey, it's not my fault if you're not turning me on, man. It's you know. Come on. <laughs> don't victim shame me. Here. Nicely done. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's like it's like a it's mood like, ring. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, How are you feeling? Just, yeah, how's he feeling today? Let's check his hair. He's feeling great. Uh, I did. I did spike it for LA. Um, but uh, all, that all was thirty the last seconds tomorrow. I I, I, last time I no, I spiked it for Vegas too. I think I spiked it for LA, and I just didn't shower before Vegas show, so it stayed up until then. Wow, that was the last time I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was I another thing about happened. venues with showers. I was telling people after the tour, I'm like, it should be federally mandated. You have a concert venue. They should have full showers, especially for out of town. Because when you're on tour, oh, man, yeah. wow! Like the things you take for granted, having oh, a yeah. hot shower makes you feel like a whole. You know what? Person. You really want to impress not people. showering for a couple days or something. You, you really want to impress people? Have a long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, you'll get to the first week is yeah. the hardest. Yeah. 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 yeah, venues. If you really want to impress them, have a shower and a washer and dryer in the green room, <laughs> or be filthy rich like Metallica, where they bring their own washer and dryer. On I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Renaissance Fair, so I like to just kind of go somewhere that's uncomfortable to sleep and not shower for a few days and drink lots of alcohol. Oh, that's that's exactly tour. So you're like so full RP, like medieval like, times where they only be medieval once a year. times. <laughs> I'm pretty I, sure I haven't showered since tour. The true really Renaissance. My uh, blood uh, blood my blood. family has history with the Renaissance Fair here, actually. At Sunset Park, and then it moved. And what what night, field are you with? We were part of the Fair Folk, fairy, the fairies. I was an English knight, for the record, who got ensorcelled by the fairies. But we we were the hub because we were like down the street from Sunset Park. Okay. And so they're like, okay, who needs a shower? Come to our house. That's awesome. We yeah, I would come in like there is a six and a half foot tall giant on my couch sleeping. That's great. Yeah, and um, unfortunately. It just got to where the the king and the queen, who are good friends of ours, the king and the queen of the guild got so just fed up with you know, all the rules and, and just how people were being totally unreliable. I know, rent fair. What are you going to do? They just were like, you know what? We're, we're done. Someone else can run it, but we're, we're done. And then all of our Renaissance Fair folk, fair friends, almost all of them, moved up to Oregon. Fair folk are very much like musicians. It's it's Fox. you're expecting a yes. bunch of artsy fartsy people to be professional. No. You can only go so far. They get, that's the fun. They're of professional like, on setup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Setup days, everyone's like, like, good to go. Yes. Come on, guys. It opens. It opens like because there's a deadline. Yeah. And the breakdown, you still got a deadline, but you know, but everyone does it knowing that it, the sooner they get it done, the faster they can party. The thing about Renaissance Fair is you never know what sounds you're going to hear from various tents. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you know, you have you been totally to, sorry to like rest <laughs> the rest of hold it. He oh, opened nice the door. Wild, man. He kicked the door. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> speaking um, of the wilds, yeah. Um have you been you been to the one at Sunset Park? Yeah, my buddy okay. picks it on every year. You, you know, know the big you know, castle? So you know Brian Saliba, right? Not by name. Okay. He's he's I believe he's now head of parks and recreation for oh, right. Las Vegas. Uh he also does most of like the shows you see done by Smash Magazine 
on Fremont <laughs> Josh Street. Fink. On, on Fremont Street, yeah. and like a lot of stuff he does with like Lost Rages and all that. That's all. That's the same guy. Yeah. As, as Renfair. So. Oh, awesome. There's two, buddy. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know the big castle that they have every year? Which one? The big castle. They, they'll have like a little cage. The with cardboard? The, swing. the cardboard one? Or you talking yeah, about yeah. like the. And there's like okay. a cage up front with a swing. Yeah. That's, isn't that like the, the fairy cage? Over Make there? a pee pee. There was a cage okay. there because. The the um, Nevada Ballet yeah bought that bought their cage because they needed two for Nutcracker Ballet. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so we were watching. We go to the Nutcracker almost every year, and we're like, "That's my kid used to be in that cage." <laughs> Should we? You know, it's just very weak. Um, <laughs> but we're friends with they're called the Greenwood Revelers, and we're friends with them. Okay. And um, we used to hang out. They, we would our camp would be right next to them, so many of the time we would hang out with them, and they would come on over to our place. But, uh, and we would keep our extra stuff, because, you, you know, as part of the Red Fair, you can't really keep, like, here's my igloo cooler chest out in plain view. You mm-hmm. ruin the, the, the mythos, so to speak. <laughs> That's not period. I actually right. went to a Ren Fair. I'm tweeting all about this. Yeah, Ooh, the people with the freaking the zippers legit. and the, and yeah, the, and the cross exactly. stitching and the specific, uh, like, Warwick and the Castle. rubber. That's not their yeah. period. And uh, at the okay. end of the day, they actually had two trebuchets set up where they launched flaming fireballs into the field. As you do, probably pumpkins. It was awesome. Yeah. And some turkey legs. Mm. I mean. For the record, <laughs> the giant turkey legs that you get like Disneyland or, or uh, Renaissance Fair, they're mm. not actually turkey. Most times they're emu. Because turkeys don't grow that big. What? They're emu legs. Huh. Oh, I guess I like emu. Like, yeah. A lot. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> what are you gonna, nobody's going to buy an emu leg. You know, get your emu legs. But yeah, I, well, I, they're tasty. Yes, they're almost always emu legs uh, because think of the size. When's the last time you saw turkey with a drumstick that big? We we have Thanks turkey at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. No, it's not that. It's not. It's not yeah, a club like you can you turkey. can kill a man with. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I enough guess. hormones and yeah. you know, but no, the, they're generally crossbreeding. Yeah, generally, they never <laughs> taste like turkey. You're right. But yeah, they taste like salt, and I spent fourteen dollars on this. So I'm yeah, the no, the thing to do is it's miserable. Well, you think they never end. The thing they to do at Renaissance never, Fair. Have you ever made it to the? Yeah, you're right. right. No, right. you. you I will say I do. I do, biting it. I'm always yeah. like, what is with this rubber band tendon the size of my belt oh, yeah. that I've never now, seen on an emu. turkey? Have you seen an emu? Yeah, they're fucking huge. Well, I know they're mean. This one's to emus who are delicious as fuck, especially when I've had too many at the Ren Fair. Absolutely. Well, I would eat the shit. Well, the real question I don't need is now, Sorry, vegans. The real question is now: like, Did the power of suggestion just make you think it tasted like turkey? And yes. Now that you eat it, it never tastes tastes like turkey. It always tastes like salt yeah. and whatever they're using. To You're smoke like, it. oh, it's yeah. seasoning. No, it's a different bird. It just tastes like salt. It just tastes like they over salt. Yeah, you were here for the emu, okay, right? It's, yeah, it's emu. Turkey. Why not? Tur- giant turkey legs. That's, you get it at Renaissance Fair. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're yeah. Even, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they're even like fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, fake raspberry flavor, right? Wow. Um, no. The thing to do at Renaissance Fair before we close yeah. up this little chapter and move on is get the roasted nuts, the sweet roasted nuts. There's oh, a, dude. There's a guy. He's got a. Car, he's got a stand. And yes. That's the thing. You get him in a little cone. You can just eat them. Oh, mm, blah, 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 blah. The, the, the I'm all about the snacks. Well, as like, part of the Fairfolk Guild, we we were part of the parade that we nice. went through. And we would carry the nuts and then sing it Oh, nice. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. Getting back to, you know, music and stuff. Let's talk gear. Now, we don't have a drummer. They're usually the gear whores. So who's the next biggest gear whore? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm okay. a huge fan of uh, analog synthesizers. I have a mini Korg that I uh, fucking love. Nerd! Um, I kidding. love <laughs> anything that Korg does. Um, yeah, it's it's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cork's obviously a well-known name. Yeah, um, just, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember the brand my keyboard's using is in the band. It's like bright red. It's not Cork though. But uh, anyway, Moog. M O O G. Maybe. I like Moog too. I think it's that a, sounds like a Moog, like a mini Moog. I think it's just a T. No, it's a full-size keyboard. It's heavy. Like a piano, like it's a full like. Yeah, I mean it's bright red. I have no idea. Everybody can use that color. It's true. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> When's the last time you saw a bright red cork? A cork bright red? Yeah. Never. I don't know. Google. When's the last time Google you? <laughs> hey Alexa, why rain? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> is, are you sure this is not live? What? This uh, man never talks to me. That's hilarious, Brent. So 
<laughs> Brian Saliba. <laughs> Saliba me. Sorry. Nice. First of all, I like the night Nightwing. That's that's nice. Nice touch. We've been invited to. Okay. Las Vegas <laughs> well, Music Summit next week. Definitely check it out. Smashmagazine.com. Wow. Where are we going? Huh? He, we were just cordially invited. So oh, okay. I'm gonna shut him out. Oh, oh nice. Uh, Nice. You should Thank definitely you. share this video with him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You'll never guess where I was when you were That's so funny. <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, if he if he you know has any extra yeah. passes or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> he does. I just got I just got a code. If yeah, you say you're a drummer. Go with fine. us. Oh, what is it? <laughs> yeah, you can say you're a drummer. We have more drummers than fucking. Uh, I own that. I, I I yeah. <laughs> We've gone through more drummers for worse reasons. <laughs> I sincerely hope I, I I wouldn't end up for the same reason. But yeah. Well, no, I mean we've come with us. Haven't had any what like, is it? really really bad experiences with, not with drummers. No, like, most of our drummers. Nobody's died yet. Well, no, not at all. No, they've been, no we, yeah, it's all good we, friends. We always yeah. steal people from other bands, and those yeah. bands are their babies. And it's, yeah. I expect yeah. a ton of things from someone, that, and I'm like. <laughs> well, every, like I don't know, show up at rehearsal. <laughs> well, uh, no, not by it. But, like every drummer is in eight bands, so I mean, like, when yes, they come up, every yeah. good drummer is in eight every bands. drummer and every bass player. Yeah, that's true. Is never sure on work. Yeah, uh, and most yeah. of the time, you know, it's it's this is good. Yeah, yeah really good. You were saying? Well, yeah, it's, it's you just I was appreciating. I was appreciating yeah. screwball. I was, it's usually just yeah. Well, I'm gonna go out for you, or yeah. I'm gonna go out with you for this tour. Yeah, you know what? And, uh, yeah. I I never actually read the label. It says to the misfits, black sheep, and screwballs. No, I know exactly what that noise is. I my daughter is is a heffalump. <laughs> what? Read that label. That's racist. What? To the misfits, seventy proof, black sheep. And it's not screw terrible. balls, bro. I just thought thirty five percent. Yeah, usually no, this like is this is like forty. I'm, I'm guessing. Evan Williams is usually forty to sixty, right? Now, this is what we're talking about. She's a misfit. Now we come to the whisper review part of the proof. Oh, no, I was looking. I saw it directly in the proof. You know, you show me Normally something. Normally, like somebody's talking about like their fifth piece of gear. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, no, I'm in no rush. I'm a huge fan of Neumann's as far as, you know, stuff to record with in the studio. Mm -hmm. Um, I love, what do you uh, rock in microphones? You, you I love, uh, I love, um, native instruments as far as like drum sounds when doing designing in the studio. Um, Massive is great. Um, I'm a huge fan of Logic and honestly doing like quick cuts of like, uh, like demoing with GarageBand because it's so freaking easy, easy mm -hmm. peasy. Yeah, dude. What do you, you rock as far as your gear when you do a show? Korg. Korg, and I believe my piano is either, I think the one I'm using it's right Yamaha. now is a Yamaha. Yeah. Yamaha? Yeah. <laughs> and what's a uh, mic? What mic do you use? Uh, I do not have a personal mic that I like to bring with me uh, live. Oh, do you, do you guys have like... The one, the one microphone I own is Phantom Power, and that's just... Annoying. It, it, so it is. It's a pain. I, 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 you know, until I can afford a really good system, it, the house mic is fine. I'm partial to my, my EV. I got an EV mic that I'm really partial to. It's, mm. uh, I compared to like a 58. Okay. The EV just takes it up a notch. Yeah. And and for some reason uh, makes me 11. sound better. <laughs> this, I like this, this one goes to 11. Yes. Right, but why don't you but, just get one with 10 that's lighter? Because this one is 11. Because it goes to 11. Yes. It goes to 11. Uh, next for gear, uh, I'm in the process of actually revamping my entire uh, gear setup because of mainly because the two bands I've been listening to nonstop lately is uh, Ministry and Carnival. Talking about influencing your your sound when you listen to bands. Yeah. So uh, uh, John Stockman, probably like one of the the best bass tones like I've ever heard. Like oh my god, so I've been chasing that, and through him discovering a company called Dark Glass Electronics. And he has his own signature pedal called the Alpha Omega. So I'm planning on getting that as well as uh, their compressor. And uh, I'm doing this interesting setup where I found this device called the Tyler from a company called KMA Audio Electronics. And okay. what it actually does is it, it splits your signal between uh, high pass and low pass frequencies okay. so that you can run multiple effects parallel to each other rather than in series. So if you have a lot of textual effects, they don't like, you know, compete with each other to be mm. heard. Yeah. So what I plan to do is to have like a clean DI sound. So you hear like the clean bass sure. and then also have just all the gritty distortion 
from the dark glass electronics and maybe maybe a fuzz pedal thrown in as well. So getting a nice like studio blend, but in a live setting, which is awesome. La uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I will say sure. we did nerd out like a motherfucker in the studio for this last record. We used uh, Spectre Bass. Tell them. Uh, Spectre Basses are absolutely <laughs> Amazing. I hear good things about They're the price of a car, but they're fantastic. For a reason. Yeah. Help yeah, me, uh, I'm poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Everything I love is so We expensive. were pretty much uh, suckers for Ibanez guitars the entire... Yeah. Did we use... Every, was, was it all Ibanez? I've got, got, what? I've got Jackson. a Jackson. Oh, yep, you had a Jackson as well. Well, it's metal. you got to have a Jackson. But we used this amazing, <laughs> beautiful sounding, uh, this baritone Ibanez. That was custom made for one of our. One of well, our it, was, producers. it was a longer scale. It was a twenty-eight inch scale. You know, most guitars are twenty-four and a half, twenty-five inch. You know what a baritone guitar is? It's no. It's it's made for the lower tunings like drop A, drop B, like huh. let, drop Z. That's why I love doing like, the show. I learn something new every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's it was just uh, so basically the longer your so the longer your scale. Right? Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. the longer scale length, the longer the neck is, the tighter the strings get. So you could. You know, take a guitar that's 24 and a half inches and put a certain gauge string on it, and it's going to be a little wobbly, a little bit floppy. And then you tighten it out, and all of a sudden, that exact same string at the same pitch is really tight. Damn. Yeah. Weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. You guys should be careful. Shit. If you're not careful, you're going to end up playing math rock. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Seriously. Yeah. Um, I and, wouldn't and mind at all. For you new musicians out there, and anybody who's watched some of my other interviews, this is the rabbit hole you can go down if you're not careful, but also it's really awesome because you can really start saying, I want to really, really make a unique tone or, or sound that's just us, you know? It's like some bands have every guitar, every single song on every album is recorded with this guitar because this is the sound of this band. Like Foo Fighters, he's got his blue, I forget the brand name, it's not Gretsch. Have you seen the series where he goes to each city to see if he can capture the sound of that Sonic, city? Sonic City. Yeah. Uh, 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 it's so cool. Yes. Have uh, you seen that? I love, mm -hmm. I love, um, crap. When he visits Chicago. This is making me forget the name of the song. Uh, it's doing its job. Yes. It's usually what, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, what people use it for. Um, he, he goes, every city he goes to, he writes a song. Oh, oh by the way, the Foo Fighters were there too. From, <laughs> from scratch <laughs> to see if he can... If if there's a real thing about capturing the tone oh, yeah. of your surroundings when you're making a record, um, to see if, if when people like go up in the mountains and they do their thing, or uh, Slipknot used to go to the Houdini Mansion, or I think they just did it for one record, or just just to see if like there's really something behind it, or if that's all bullshit, you just make it in your you yeah. know in your bedroom, yeah. sitting in your bathroom, you know. Nine inch nails. Well, guys, that just rewrote home. Yeah. Funeral home. That was <laughs> that was his next step. His first step was the Tate House. You know that, right? The Tate Murders. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I thought they tore Tate that down. When when he recorded Broken and Downward Spiral, uh -huh. and also the record he did with Manson, Marilyn Manson, Wait, that was all uh, done in the tape. I got so, lost. So I that was his first step. Oh, I thought after just a video. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What are we talking about thing. now? So then after that, he didn't know what would be next and yeah, better okay. and whatever. Who are we and talking he about? Rented out. Trent? A okay, one sorry. For yeah. The fragile. That would all make sense because I, I, I yeah. still have Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl. I'm like, oh, wait, who? We, is yeah, what? you can't let us do this because we'll just we'll keep going. That's, <laughs> that's what the inter that's what the show's about. Tangentville. Hey, um, somebody else here. Uh, are, were you done? Oh, actually, what strings do you use? Do you do you have a preference? Uh, D Dario. Uh, I think uh, probably the heaviest they make one thirty five on the on the low end. Now that we're Tuning to drop A, I'm looking into a, a multi scale bass. For a second, I thought you said drop M. <laughs> we made our M. own. We made our own. You play it, it's just like, mmm. I would be willing to say it. And I guess right now would be the time. Just to like plug a shirt. It. Mm. But if you're, if you're looking for strings, you gotta talk to my buddy Roman and mm. Slither Strings. Yes. So he's Slither's part of this shit. Slither Strings is absolutely great. They're a Las Vegas based company. They are the exact same quality, if not better, strings than everything else on the market. And he, he, Sets them at musicians' prices. Just right. like strings. Do they, so good. Do they also slap do them or do they just sell strings? <laughs> uh, they, 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 they string distributor. Right on. on online strictly, or do they have a store? Uh, I'll give you this number. You know what? Give it to me because I, I'm always looking for you know sponsors for videos, and it'd be great to support a local band. They're local, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I should try his tequila as well. Right? What? I'm serious. The guy does things to alcohol. Oh, I don't know if I. I'm not a big fan of alcohol. I believe it. Pinky up because I have class out the ass.
Mm. So, uh, do you have a preference of picks or whatever? Just to finish up with him. Uh, I was always using heavy picks. Like, I primarily, I, I stepped into the world of bass being a guitar player for 20 years. Ah, okay. Prior to moving to Vegas. And when I moved to Vegas, everybody seemed to need a bass player. So, <laughs> I stepped into that role. And Third lead guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> and it's only been up until recently that I'm really starting to <laughs> He's lead kind bass of, player. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like starting to explore more and kind of understand on a deeper level like what the role is of a bass player in man. And I think that's what has sent me on this like downward spiral of finding like the my sonic sweet space with and like certain effects that I want to get before the next shows There's an album come name. up. Sonic Sweet Space. I thought you were going to say downward spiral, and I had to terrible <laughs> news for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> been there. It's been it's been done. Yes. Um, but, uh, oh, hey, look who joined us! <clears throat> but I switched uh, to man lighter can't poop. Pick, so. you, you, man can't you, poop. You, you done with your kissy face time? That's what I like to call poop. My kissy face time. Hi, old. <laughs> Who's next on the gear? Uh, oh, someone got face time. For the five nerds who care, uh, yeah, my main guitar with this band is. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> Is it we're, four, four, we're four yeah. of them. We're exactly. four of them. It's a Jackson Dinky. So the guitar is a Jackson Dinky. Like I said, Slither Strings. Uh, Dunlop Picks. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then as far as the rig goes, it gets a little more complicated. We can do a whole show on it. But I've got... I got uh, time. Nice. I've got an Engel Invader head. And then as a control station, I'm using a pretty new thing called an Axe FX8. So if you've heard of Axe FX, it's like an amp modeler slash uh, all the effects you'd ever need. So they're, uh, they're the things like all the pros are using. They're just kind of like the Kemper. It's like another brand of Kemper. Oh, right on. But the Axe FX8 is just the effects. So it doesn't have any of the amp modeling. It just has like every pedal and sound modeled that you could ever need. And then it also has controls that will switch the channels on your amp. So you can hit one button and like turn to channel one and then turn on chorus, and then turn on like your fourth delay on that setting, and turn on a phaser and activate a one, like in one hit. I'm lost. Are you so, lost? Huh? Okay. Yeah, I'm All right. Let's talk. Let's yeah. man talk. He's just so got for, more going so on. For the two, <laughs> nerd, for the two <laughs> nerds, you're talking to somebody who I actually prefer individual pedals. Oh, you're tap dancing. I am not way too me, much. To me, <laughs> ta- to, I prefer the tap dancing to. Wait, was it number forty-three tone that I want? But no, please. It's so much easier. I'll, but then again, I'll I'm doing this, and you're doing what you do. So you know. <laughs> yeah, no, all the all sort of. I I definitely got sick of. <laughs> for, well, for me, there was something nice about. Here comes the distortion part. <clears throat> well, right here comes. That's what I say to the mic right before we break it down. <laughs> That's exactly how I do it. Then here comes the distortion part. Here comes <clears throat> the distortion. You're welcome for that. But yeah, guys, here comes the distortion chorus and reverb and phasing. Right. Just one. Just one. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. He makes that face. It's as pretty well. awesome. Fair enough. He's, By the way, how, process is already. How's your skunky weed beer? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> still up. Still. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's skunky weed beer. beer. No, he was just talking about how. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's the same place. No, it's good. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Really quick, flipping back, we never talked about your amp or your rig. Oh, uh, using a hard key, four by ten. Of course, and uh, standard for bass. LH one thousand thousand watt head. Um. <clears throat> My plan with the dark glass electronics with the, the Alpha Mega Distortion, it actually has a cab simulator uh, coming out of it, so you can actually load impulse responses onto it, so you can simulate, say, like a vintage Ampeg SVT. Without having the cab. Yeah, with a, with a certain specific mic and a specific mic placement, and you can imprint that wow. onto the pedal. You can really nerd out on that. It's fun. I'm super excited about it. So. Oh my god. Please. This, is, this is a rabbit hole, but it, it can be really, really exciting. Especially when music is what you do for a living. Um, we still gotta do you. Real quick, I just yeah, wanna. Yeah. Have you guys heard of a band called, a local band called Revolta? <laughs> Revolta? Yes. That Molly sounds is really familiar. Uh, yeah. Talk, you reminded me of them. Um, I actually did a, a live show review of them, link here. Uh, they don't use any cabs, any amplifiers on stage. It's all through the PA rack mounted. Wow. And it's so balanced. Their drummer sets off to the side so he doesn't overload them. But other than that, you're just like, this sounds like a record. It's amazing. Rack I never mounted. Like they have racks. So they just all run through the yeah. Right. yeah. Mm-hmm. It all runs to the PA, but they've got, you know, the different emulators and stuff. So it sounds like there's there's cabs and like old school pods. They're yeah. Just like, 
But oh, yeah, metal right. setting. Totally. When you look at them, you're like, you guys, <laughs> they thought long and hard about this, and it <coughs> makes sense. They're the band with the nine string bass player. Well, I mean, most most bands you see out there in festivals or, or your favorite yeah. headliners are using black mounts and not they're going DI. That's true. They have most most times too. when you see a cabinet on stage, it's a dummy cabinet. Sure, we've all That's, seen the picture of the little yeah, tiny yeah. orange. Did, did you did you, did you see did you see uh Zach Zach Wilde's oh, yeah. uh, setup for yeah, man? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> awesome. I, I've seen none of those were on, but I, it looked great. <laughs> at at uh, at Sand Dollar, I've seen a, a where he had an amp and then he brought this little tiny practice amp. And he ran a mic. He had a mic right in front oh, of the sometimes practice amp. On the coolest, man. But he also he was somehow playing. He was playing through both at the same time. And it, it, he had figured out okay, if I turn this one to this and this one to this, and it made a nice fat sound because he couldn't afford the expensive combo amp or, or mm. you remember, what, remember combo amps? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. To I'm use or combo with some fries and a coke right now. Me, um, PB sixty five hundred five. I got Chinese food. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Mesa Boogie Head or Cat, excuse me, and uh, that's called. I was using. Oh, uh, Epiphone or Epiphone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I personally feel there's nothing wrong with the Epiphones. Um, I don't feel there's anything uh, wrong. Maybe with for recording, wrong. you want a different. But the the emulators are so strong on recording now. You can you can have a Gibson sound or whatever you want. Yeah. Your Epiphone can sound like. Flying beat. Let me bite my tongue. Uh, oh, wait, what? What? Yeah, that's fine. I couldn't tell if you were biting your tongue. Did I start something? Him to bite his tongue? Nah, or it was a little oh, bit no, of both? <laughs> no, no, please, yeah. purist. Come on. A lot of. Uh, it's, it, no, he's going to hate me for saying this, but there's also a lot of uh, guitar tracks that are on our new record that are done through like a $250 BC Rich. Nothing wrong with BC Rich. That I've had for like. Yeah. Eleven years, like that. <laughs> that we've reamped and people get BC Rich like, and our producers like that's fine. Stick, but yeah, you know if you like it, you like it. Yeah, it's it's a, yeah, it's it's a select few. It's a select few. A lot of them are yeah. done with the evidence, but here I, and there, sometimes you just get a performance and a sound out of something, and you're like, yeah. sounds yeah. great. Like I still have that spear, which is a guitar made out of plywood, like yeah, like yeah. balsa wood. Is it's that that silver spear? one? A spear, a spear. Yeah, it, that's I, awesome. I, I love. That's my honestly, favorite guitar of yours. Yeah, honestly, I bought it for the paint job and then <laughs> put EMGs in it, and it sounds great. So it's, okay. it's the cheapest guitar I own is probably the one I use live, like second to most. So sorry, Jimmy. Back to you. Hmm. Oh, um, I think that's pretty much covered, man. Uh, strings, pedals, strings, um, the snakes. Mm -hmm. Pedals, yeah. The snakes. <laughs> it's because the guy that makes them is Roman Snake Jam. Yeah. So it's it's nice. yeah, 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 yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah. like he's, my he's the shit. In my head. Awesome. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although snakes, the snakes is a good band name if it hasn't been taken. Oh, it's been decent. Sure. Anyway, sure. uh, sure. uh, 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 video game characters. Pedals. That's the word. Pedals. No pedals. No pedals no. at all. No. Yeah, we used the so, use the MXR, the carbon copy, the delay. It's oh like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. like an analog delay with yeah. like a little lower. Oh, well, okay, granted. But you're not like rocking that. a couple different distortion pedals or anything. Mm -hmm. so you're the <laughs> clean <Yeah>. guy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, particular picks or anything, or just whatever you find on the floor. Um, no, what I find on the floor, it's a. Uh... Oh man, what is it? What is it? Ooh, it's... Come on, look at these guys. <laughs> there we go. Hey, wow. You know it's a guitar player when he's literally got. Oh, I'm strapped. A little <laughs> strapped. I'm ready to go. That's God, like I've belt. never really? seen a leather big holder. He uses styling dog brain picks. Thank oh my thank God. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The green ones. I've I use, yeah, it's a little thing. I wish you could hold that up. I've never seen a It's a the best grip on a pick you'll ever see in your life. Feel this. Feel that shit. Touch it. Put it so, on your face. Ooh, you know, as I was telling you, when I was younger, a lot of like, speed metal and metal, like oh, influences nice. and stuff, like, um... This you know, doesn't break on you? My cousins... Those no, are amazing. I've never broken any of those. Those are like Trojans. They're great. Right. They're... Wow. Why what? Who said that? That's your man, Lindsay. <laughs> he goes, yeah! You're welcome. So, yeah, yeah, man. Just like this right here. These things little, feel... Little leather pouch. I got this as a gift from Griffin. That is uh, awesome. Ryan. It reminds me of yeah. a tiny... One of the parts of my Renaissance Fair costume throwback. Is a, you know what sporin is? It's a it's a you wear it with this, with your kilt. It's it's, it's what a Scotman wears with his kilt, and it's like a big old leather oh, yeah, 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 yeah. man purse wallet. Thing. Got the little yeah. It's what it reminds me of only tinier. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Yeah. It's, like perfect. it's cute. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a Scottish military one that my buddy gave me. Like white fur. Somebody's compensating. White cross <laughs> blue. What? Yeah. What were we talking about? That? What? So most of the time I play when I'm playing outside of Nocturnal and myself, I'm, I'm 
pedal a little faster with my right hand. So right. No, I, I can see the problem. Would, that would lend itself to double speed. Yeah, exactly. Speed so I just they just shoot out everywhere. Bing. Bing. Yeah. So, so these these the kind of they hold yeah, out. And eyes out. Yeah. The kind of music I do, I, I tend to go for medium uh, because I'm more just chords. Mm-hmm. I'm, or if I'm if I'm doing any sort of soloing, it's not speed. It's you yeah. know. I got a natural heavy hand, so I can still get that that good. Friction no, it makes sense. It's kind of like um, uh, bamboo, how it flexes so much. It's mm-hmm. got that strength of right. not. It's not rigidity so much as it is. It'll hold up to all the tor- the, the torsion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of nerd now, uh, no pedals. Uh, but a bit of what yeah. what guitars you playing? Did we talk about that? The plan? Playing. Oh, you said oh, you said Les Paul. Oh, okay. Yeah, I play Les Paul now. I got my eyeballs on something that. Hmm? Uh, that I yeah. like a lot, but uh, we'll we're, see. Well, we're getting to that because yeah. the next, oh, okay. the next, the next Thank question you. actually. You good lead in, man. Time for the Wayne's World moment. What's your dream gear? What's your? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be mine. <laughs> well, it's like a new pair of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's constricting and hard to breathe. But you guys, then, w- it's like it's a part of you. <laughs> you guys want to go guitar shopping? It'd be awfully cool if you did. <laughs> so oh, let's, let's, start with, let's summer, start with right? Christopher here. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have? No, that's, wait, that's the other one, right? I have yet to meet a guitar that's player. Who, uh, if if <laughs> someone plays an acoustic guitar all the so time, good. they're like, "Oh, I'm good. I'm set. I got. I, I like what I got." Yeah. Wait, what but for the, electric guitar players, they always junior. want something different. What, what's your junior. dream gear? My my uh, well, guitar right now. Well, I mean, I like the I like the 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 cab in the head. The sound that I have now, it's it's, it's nice. Just a uh, just just the guitar. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. It's a uh, solar. Yeah, solar. Solar. Yeah, solar, solar guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're great. Where are they out? Do you know? Spain. 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 They're made in Spain. Spain. Right? Were you gonna say Switzerland or what's something with an S? Some country. Yeah. Not us. Solar is made in Spain. Did they Senegal. Get, wait, did they ship from Switzerland or Spain? Which is they ship from Spain. Okay. okay. You're thinking of Sweden, Spain. which a lot of so solar guitar players. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, don't sue me. Um, cool. So yeah, baritone guitar, man. Yeah. Again, I I have never heard of this concept of a baritone yeah. guitar, baritone sax, baritone other things, but Brandon Benjamin uses them. Chevelle uses them. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much anybody Corn, who drops down. So like anybody I think C or lower. Is that, the, or is or that the new modern rock or, tone that you hear on a lot, a lot of rock since the late radio shows? Maybe, maybe, maybe earlier. earlier. A while. I mean, uh, like all they did was make uh, a mariachi style guitar electric. <laughs> because if you know, I'm serious. Like you see, like the guy playing the bass, and you see the guy playing the guitar, but then you see like a slightly bigger, rounder. That's a baritone acoustic guitar. Oh, acoustic guitar. But they, but. No, well, can be a I'm saying they've been around yeah, for a yeah, while. That, yeah. that, oh, okay. that, that it was metal bands that only took that on recently. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, they've had, they've had baritone electric since probably, probably the seventies, sixties. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, don't. I mean, who's used them aside like, from orchestras? Well, yeah. 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 Um, All right. Uh, next for Dream Gear, metal nerd. Uh, I was looking at a music band bongo bass in stealth black. What is a bongo bass? He doesn't. He was actually You're just making up words now. <laughs> it's specifically for bass players. It's, 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 it's called he can play it and I can also jam. Right? And he's like it's a weird name. It's called acoustic. Called the it's, slap. it's a very bizarrely <laughs> shaped bass. It's the back um, slap. It was actually designed what I read up on uh, Ernie Ball Music Band. They they actually worked in collaboration with a team from BMW mm-hmm. and they designed this bass and it sounds awesome. But and also the parts are super expensive. It breaks down on you. You got to ship it away to get it fixed. I'm sorry, that's not. I'm Wait, sorry. are we? Are we? Are we talking about, are we talking about exotic sports cars? What sorry, Michael. Go on. Go on. Dude, what BMW wants to sponsor us? Worth oh, more than my snap. car. First of all, I, no. I used to drive a Mini Cooper, a BMW Mini yeah. Cooper, and that thing totally broke down. I mean, anyway, go ahead. Did you ever have the <laughs> trunk lock up, and then you had to bring it to the shop to have like somebody? And they're like, oh, we actually got to call somebody for the key, and it's going to take about three weeks and also 3000 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend who who sought out a a Volkswagen (laughs) Bug in high school, and they got this beautiful blue, brand new Volkswagen Bug, and in the first week, Mm -hmm. we tried to fit eight people in her car, Jen, and (laughs) and her glove compartment... I didn't kick it in. It wasn't me, but somebody, <laughs> somebody kicked and thrashed while we were listening to metal, and it, the, the the handle for the glove compartment broke. Who could that be? Three hundred dollars. Wow. Oh yeah, and two weeks in the shop. I hope you paid for it. 
I didn't do it. It wasn't. Yeah, you lied. Do it. You, lie like, just, you weren't listening to the story. Are you Persian? Because you lie like a rug. I, it's, I'm Jewish, but we are probably part of the same bloodlines. Anyway. Yes. Oh, He's no. gone. He's gone. He's you, done. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot. He's gone. I'm just making sure you're in prison. <laughs> I, I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> I want all the hands. We're talking about Dream Gear. Were you, were you done with no. the base? Keep going. I want to go base. Tell me. Tell me more about your base. Um, well, I, I found out about them mainly through bass player for a band called Nothing More. Because his rig oh, sounds Dan. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. his gear sounds awesome. A bass player named Dan? So I was like, oh, let me look up this bass. Oh, it's uh, almost $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's awesome. Little, yeah. Let me find something a little bit more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's uh, like rent and a half. Is Shit. That, how many strings is it? Four? Uh, I play a five string. But, but is it a five string bass, the bongo bass that you're talking about? Yeah, they come in, I think, four, five, so and that's six strings. $600 a string, you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> Help me in poor. Help me in poor. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor them. Uh, who's next for Dream Gear? I'm pretty sad. I actually just got Drew Solar to be yeah, a dick. Yeah, he did. He did. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. First! So, yeah. Right? I was wondering yeah. when that was going to Here's the comments section. Yeah. <laughs> Solar for the low tunings, then Jackson for the higher tunings. Yeah. Nice. So, yep, I'm set. Douche. <laughs> oh, you know what? Obviously. <laughs> I'm ready for him, too. What? Okay. Oh, you just made it on Vegas! Look what you- let's get- yeah, okay, okay first down, of all, right? <laughs> any Raider fan who the diehard I'm Raider fan from Oakland fan, will still not stab me for the Las Vegas Raiders. Well, stab I'm just... a diehard Raider fan from back in the LA days. Yeah, old yeah old see, they don't like you either. I don't care. No, I don't. I'm one of them. No, I I work with people who my land my lanyard at work because I have an ID uh, uh, you know badge to badge into the places. Yeah. My lanyard is a niner is a niner one, and I usually wear a niner hat. I work with people who wear Raider things all day long, and you tell them, "Hey, how about them Las Vegas Raiders?" They're like, "It's not the Las Vegas Raiders. It's it's just the Raiders." And I'm like, "Look, bud." Here's by the way, here's a little, little insight. I'm going to tell you this because we've been drinking. Okay. Oh boy. We'll and get to my gear. Yeah, this all we'll get to my gear right? later. That's what Fuck I like. We'll get to your gear. I sing. This is important. If, it, <laughs> if you go to the Raiders Toilet Bowl Stadium, I'd spend all my money on the uh, guitars I wanted. Yeah, Hold exactly. on a second. That yeah. stadium that you're calling a toilet bowl? Are you talking the water like building here? Bowl. This is going to bring some of the coolest fucking concerts into town. Fair enough. It is the biggest stadium to reach Las Vegas. Fair enough. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be lucky enough well, to I see a know. fucking knot fest. Huh. Uh, hopefully you see fucking uh, fuck Nocturne yeah, Bears. Hey, I'm on their <laughs> show. I'm looking at you just yeah, yeah, with so blonde. But wait. So there's yeah, there's all that tax bear. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, so this Raider Stadium is giving people jobs. It's it, fucking, it's, it, this is awesome. This is awesome. It's, it's okay. going to be even better than what's in Raiders fans. Diehard Oakland Raider fans. You know who you are. You know why you have a reputation. If you go there, just be aware. There is a cell and a portion of the gang task force underneath that stadium just waiting for you to start nope, some shit. The Nocturnal not Affair does not it's agree or is, condone yeah. anything my wife this gentleman said. Who, yeah. it's on that task Come force. see us yeah, play well, there. Well, opening I mean, night. They have Disclaimer. Not, they Disclaimer. Have this is not the like Nocturnal Affairs opinion. Water, this is it's, not... It's not a special <laughs> one for Raiders fans. <laughs> no, it's for Raiders fans. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to gear. Gear, yes. You... I would love to be, I would love for each and every one of us to be sponsored by Sure for in-ears, uh, monitoring systems, everything like that. Um, I would really love to have a Warwick or a Spectre bass, or both, uh, to record but with. You don't play bass. Yes, I do. <gasps> oh, just not at shows. <laughs> no, I do not. Uh, uh, Karimas. Hi. Hi. I'll take that Spectre bass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I would love to Help have me to record with, with the Spectre Warwick. Um, obviously, you know, Korg and, that and, and the Help newest and greatest uh, gear and synthesizers because it's, it's, there's something about analog that's, uh, it's just, it's different. It's fucking great. Well, yeah. yeah and yeah, it's, to it's, my, it's like a living, breathing. Mm, not, not to sound hip, hipsterish, but analog in many things is better than digital. Yeah, or at sometimes. least, at least, not, maybe not better, but it's that thing you feel is missing sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, porn. Anyway, in a lot of porn. <laughs> um, I would, I would really love a. Uh, I, 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 like, I like solar guitars. Uh, I would really, really love. Really uh, 
A shuriken. I think that would be great. Shuriken? Yeah. Sure, and yeah. shuriken yeah. Guess six. Huh? I guess it's a shuriken. What is it? Uh, shuriken's a line six guitar. It's, what is oh, it? sorry. Oh, we're on guitars you... now. Sorry. Yeah, you know, we're talking about gear, man, and I record with everything. I'm still thinking so, mics. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I mean... Is line six guitar what they have? It was a... Uh... Variax. Variax. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Stevic from 12 Foot Ninja... Came up with a shuriken. Ah, back to that's, a, that's a baritone. Mm-hmm. Well, they have available in baritone, I think, too. Yeah. Also, Halo yeah, guitars. Yeah, yeah. Halo, yeah. Halo guitars are pretty fantastic. Um, yeah. Help me, I'm poor. Yes. I'm stealing yes. line. Uh, real quick. We're almost done, actually. You're on the mm. last question. Hooray. Uh, but before that, I want to sneak in a bonus question. Who does the majority of the um, songwriting when it comes to actually... So it's you, right? There's this uh, homeless guy. On yeah, yeah, yeah. And homeless Joe with his bottle of Thunderbird. I know. Was like a, have you guys seen Dolomite? <laughs> Dolomite. <laughs> it's kind of like that, but with this band. Do you mean, you mean Fry's dog that was encased in Dolomite and oh, Futurama? Fry's dog. No! Still waiting for him. I'm a nerd. He's still waiting for him outside that pizza shop. Oh. That was the most prepared for this interview. Anyway, um, I write I write a lot of this stuff, and then I bring it to the team. And uh, if they like it enough, they play it. Okay. And sometimes this guy's like, "Hey, uh, this would sound better if it was like this." And I'm usually like, "Yeah, you're fucking right." Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Berkeley College of Music, motherfucker. And then uh, really, every member of my jazz band except me from Berkeley, they had some, <laughs> I had to throw uh, you some exposure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Dude. I, I, they start talking theory, and I'm just like. What measure are you coming in? Where do I need to sing? And then, I'm a guitar uh, player, he, so I'm like, measure. Yeah, door. <laughs> <laughs> measure, or like, mine. So, real quick. <laughs> so, songwriting guy. Hello. Hello. How'd you get this number? Yes. Uh, would, how would... I? This, it's time for those interview questions that are your standard interview mm-hmm. questions that okay. I, you know, everybody hates. Number one. Where would you say you, most of your... Inter- inspiration comes from? Is it from everyday life? Is it from your personal past history? Or is it from just what's going on in the world right now? Or yes? <laughs> yes. Um, I write more about, I guess, whatever is going to make me feel better about my life most of the time, but I try to leave it open enough for people to relate to it and compare it to what's going on in there so they feel like they're not alone. Even if they feel like they don't have anybody else there, that is there for them. As a singer songwriter, oh, by the way, you're the first person I've ever asked this to. Okay. I just thought about this on the fly. Mm-hmm. Thanks, whiskey. Um, <laughs> I personally, a lot of times, get like a, a, a phrase stuck in my head, you know, some sort of lyric, and then I build off of that. Mm-hmm. Where where does it usually come for you? It depends. Um, I could be thinking of a guitar riff or a melody in my head, Mm -hmm. and I usually either go to the guitar or my synth or piano, and I'll play it out. Uh, And anything from lyrics to colors to imagery will appear in my head, uh, and then I'll go from there. And actually, having listened to some of your your, your music uh, through videos, I hear that. Okay. I, I hear that it's not always both lyric driven. Sometimes it is uh, color driven. I like that. Nobody's ever said color. I prefer black and white because that gives yeah. people a chance to kind of uh, fill in for themselves. Right on. Um, also, it allows for really low budget videos that don't look like <laughs> shit. <laughs> Ding. And uh, yeah, it's also very forgiving when you're dealing with, shall we say, blemishes, skin tone. Yeah. Hello, Irish, Jewish, and Russian. Oh, I was thinking. I was born to be red. Oh, that too. Yes. (laughs) I saw the video. I was born to be one's white skin. I'm pink. That is what I'm fucking. Irish, English, Scotch, Canadian, and German. Yeah. (laughs) Lachaim. Lachaim. Don't tell you. Look out for the sun. (laughs) For real. Mm. Second question. This is to everybody, but I have a feeling I know who's going to answer it. This is that most hated of questions. How would you describe your band's sound? Dark rock. Dark rock. Yes. I like it. I, um, think, I think dark rock with a twist of, twist of some heavy. Just a twist. I would say, yes. A little bit. I would say, like, like you know, like power when slot. When you're like power, power, power slot, power it's like dark rock. That that's a, like for wet, okay. so it's a little heavier than usual. <laughs> I, I was there. I was like, it's like when a sponge is watering it. 
If you don't, if you don't know this man, don't even talk to me about that. With a twist. Was it after note? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just when you think we're really mad, we'll play some acoustic guitars and I'll cry about it. Actually, looking at some of your stuff and um and and the who will rock you? I was I was like okay, there's a seriousness there, but at the same time, there's uh, especially during your little like interviews when you found out you won a particular round or whatever. Mm. I was just like okay, there's there's silliness. Mm-hmm. You can't go on tour without imploding or being really silly with each other. It just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. You're you're stuck in a box, and then you go in another box. You go to the bathroom well, in a box. What's it's important is chill. everybody, as long as everybody's fed, can go to the bathroom, right. and it's slept enough. Uh, nobody's really ex- imploding or exploding on each other. To keep it professional, we have a very strict no joking rule in the van or at venues. Oh, he's very right. <laughs> <laughs> as for Anna, <laughs> whole interview's done. <laughs> oh, he has never been more right. The moment somebody jokes. Put them on the roof. Why do you think we've had so many drummers? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, lay them on their back, yeah. tie some skis to their yeah. feet and hands, yeah. and bonus ski rack. A lot of the time, it's just like, oh, you thought you were a stand-up comedian? We wanted to drum. Kyle said, then, "Knock, knock." In Montana, still haven't heard from him. Guess what? <laughs> Nobody was fucking <laughs> there for him. That's who. <laughs> Craigslist ad. Yep. Craigslist ad. <laughs> had a guy that night. Knock, knock. Right. He's where? Nobody knows. <laughs> She's All right, um, I'm gonna go sit down. You guys keep the interview going. <laughs> So where did you grow up? Oh boy! You know, See, I didn't go for those those low <laughs> hanging fruit. Yeah. It's hard to tell you, who's when, my original Rick. When did you? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> you fucking win, dude. You win. You win. God damn it! Cheers, fellas. Yes. I love you. God damn it. <laughs> I want to thank the Eternal Affair for coming by. It was a great interview. And, uh, yeah. If you want to check out more from them, go ahead and check the links down in the description. Or click oh, here. That's in the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, bye guys. Cheers. Better at music than juggling. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm going to fade out on that. That's awesome.